goal of the Two Flow Public School District is to give every student here an opportunity to be successful. Hi, I'm Greg Ellis with Your Story, Our Purpose, and One Heartbeat. And today we're at the Two Flow Middle School where we're talking about PACE, a new program to help students get the success out of school that they want. And with me to talk about PACE, what it means, and how long it's been implemented here is Annette Riddle and Richard Trotter. Thank you all so much for your time. And we're just going to get right down to it. What is PACE? What does it stand for? And kind of what's the history of the program? PACE, Positive Alternatives for Continuing Education, was developed at Tupelo Middle School to meet the needs of our students who are two or more years behind their peers. I was hired in early July um, to be the teacher for this program. I have worked in the alternative setting for the last four years and um, I love working in the alternative setting and this is an alternative setting within the school. Um, our students, as Ms. Riddle said, are two or more years behind their peers. Uh, the program we are using what is called the Apex Learning Program. Um, it offers over 100 courses to these students. Not only are they getting the courses to successfully uh, move on from the middle school, but several of the students are getting high school courses as well that will give them credits towards graduation. So we're a couple of weeks into school now, well, almost a month. How have the students responded to these, these courses that are being offered? The students are very excited. Prior to the start of school, we met with students and their parents, told them about the goals of the program, and so the students are very excited. Um, their parents, they have been very uh, supportive and instrumental in um, helping with this program. Is, is it like an accelerated model? The Apex Learning Program allows them to work um, is it individualized? It is. It, it is individualized to, to a certain extent. It provides them with assistance through the program. I am also there to provide them with assistance um, working through the classes. I have also met with several staff members at Tupelo Middle School who have offered their own personal time to help these young people um, succeed in this in, in, with this program. So when they leave here and go to the high school, then they're, they're back on track at the high school. Yes, they should be back on track. We have been coordinating this program with Tupelo High School. In fact, today we went, met with uh, two counselors, a special education teacher, and a building level administrator about the program to just discuss a transitional plan because we want the students to continue to receive that same um, support at the high school. So kind of take me through a typical day with the student when he comes to school. What What is that a student going to encounter? What is their day like? The student comes in, um, I meet them at the door. Uh, it's mandatory in my classroom. We shake hands, we look each other in the eye. That's, that's, that's what we do. Um, kind of relaxes them as they come relaxes in. Them and it, it, I try to keep Um, so they come in, we shake hands, good morning, how you doing? Um, and they sit down. They have between 7.30 and, and 8 o'clock to come in. The earlier you get there, great. They sit down, they get started. Um, I have breaks built in if they, if they want breaks, but the majority of my students are with me five periods a day. And basically what they do is they come in and they get started. They ask questions if they have questions. They roll at their own pace. Um, generally, they'll do this. Mr. Trotter, can I go to the restroom? Absolutely, you can go to the restroom. They go to the restroom, they come back, and they get right back at it. They go to lunch, they come back, and they get right back at it. And that, like I say, I have breaks for them. They generally choose not to take them. They just want to keep rolling because they see what that, that light at the end of the tunnel. So they're seeing the results immediately just like you guys are. Yes. Yeah. Additionally, I see them in the mornings 
with students get here at 7.30, they either report to the cafeteria for breakfast or to first period. And that's when they see, see Mr. Trotter. Um, I see them first thing coming from the cafeteria. I try to, I speak to each one. I say something positive to just keep them motivated and inspired. So as a school counselor, I'm one of the first people they see in the morning. And so I'm always excited to speak and to say something positive to each one of them. And to monitor their process, how is that done? Are they taking tests? Um, are there other measures that you look at? Kind of take us through that process. The, the ATEC learning program is set up in a way where they go a unit at a time. Um, say, for instance, unit one. They start out with an overview of the unit. They have to complete that overview and then they move to what is called the study. The study is basically the lesson for that unit. After that study, they have a review and a practice. The practice is great worth five points. Um, they complete the practice, they turn that in, I grade that. Um, then they move on to the quiz after the practice. The quiz itself uh, generally is worth ten points. This is for English language arts. Other other subjects are, are different, but in general, their quizzes are worth ten points. They take their quizzes. Um, they have, there's no max about this program is I say there's no max on how many times they can take it. It's not the same quiz every time. So sometimes they don't realize that when they have to take it again, they're actually learning more. Um, but when they successfully pass that quiz, they move to the next lesson that's in that unit, and then there is a test at the end of that every unit. So after every unit, and they pass their test, do you see the confidence growing in them? They have smiles on their face. After every quiz, I see instant results on it, and I will say, good job, or if they score perfect on the first try, there's a reward in place for them. At the end of the unit, when they complete the unit, um, they get rewarded. Um, it's simple things, like they might get um, a Dodgers uh, gift certificate or something like that for something real small, but it, it's still a reward, and they, they appreciate So they see the progress, it excites them, it motivates them. As educators, it has to be the same for you guys, too, to see that progress being made and to see their attitude about education change. Yes, and Mr. Trotter, he sends us an email when I say us, me, and myself, and our school leaders, um, Dr. English, Ms. Knight, Mr. Schomper, to let us know how the kids are doing. And we give them verbal praise as well as something as simple as candy, you know, just something to continue to encourage them. And so when we see and we hear about their progress, it excites us to know that, hey, these kids are making progress. They can learn, and they will achieve their goals. You know, this year we're just, um, we're learning, okay? We will assess at the end of the nine weeks reassess again at the end of the semester. Um, we want to keep the program, the number small, you know, maybe 15 students. We don't want it too large because the concept is a school within a school so that we can meet the individual needs of students. And so what we normally do is just keep checking our list of overage students, try to uh, find those that would benefit from the program in a small smaller setting. What a great program. Something like this, we, we talk about thinking outside the box, anything that we can do to help our students, and this is definitely one of those programs. And I thank you guys for what you do for our students and for taking time to come on today and educating us about Texas. So thank you. We hope you learned a lot as well. For your story, our purpose one heartbeat.